Hey, welcome back team. Today we're talking about distributed loads. We, we finished chapter chapter nine, which was centroids, and now I'm kind of going to jump you back to chapter four to talk about distributed loads, because really distributed loads, I think it's kind of out of place until you talk about centroids, and then they really make sense, okay? We know about centroids, center volume, center mass, center of area, center of weight, center of pressure, right? Distributed loads is has a lot to do with that, okay? So when you say a distributed load, what is a distributed load? Well, it's like me standing on the floor, okay? My weight is distributed uh, over my, the size of my foot. Or it's like this textbook. If I lay this textbook on the table, this textbook has weight, but that weight is not a point load or a concentrated load like we've been used to, right? Like that. That's what we're used to. But this book actually has the weight spread out all over the whole thing. So that, that weight is distributed across an area. That's why we call it a distributed load. Some things that you might see for that. Um, maybe, maybe a, a snow load on a roof. Let's say you were designing a roof uh, or a building and you needed to, to account for the snow load. Now in, in Texas where we are, there, we don't get a lot of snow, so we don't have to worry about that. But if you're up north, and you have like a three or four foot storm that dumps that much snow, that could be a tremendous amount of, of uh, weight on the roof. If that kind of snow hit Texas, it would collapse most buildings in Texas because they're just not designed to take that kind of weight on the, on the roof. So the distributed load looks something like this. You'll see it given in some kind of weight per length. In this case, 100 pounds per feet. So for every foot I go, I'm going to accumulate 100 pounds of weight. It's, that's what the distributed load looks like. And this is what we call a rectangular distributed load. So it's, it's even across the whole thing, okay? So how do, we, how do we deal with that? I know how to deal with that, but I don't know how to deal with that, okay? And so it would go something like this, right? You would calculate the size of the distributed load by looking at... How much of it you have so it's a hundred pounds per feet uh, over four feet so that would be 400 pounds and where do you apply that what we're doing here is we're converting a distributed load into a concentrated load just to simplify things so that we can solve it as a regular old statics problem so that would be 400 pounds right so you do a hundred pounds per feet times four feet, right? The feet cancel out and I'm left with just pounds. Okay, so that's where that comes from. And then where do you apply it? At the center. Okay, so distributed loads are all around us. Let me, let me, let me give it to you this way. Let's say that you want to go dancing, okay? And you can go dancing, you can dance with me, mm -hmm. or you could dance with lovely Linda, okay? Now, I am full man size, okay? 220 pounds, that's full man size, but lovely Linda, she's only 120 pounds, okay? So, who are you going to dance with? Well, before we make up our mind, let me tell you one thing. Me and Linda, we're both really bad dancers, okay? And we're going to step on your foot, okay? Now, I only go dancing in my cowboy boots, right? And the heel of my cowboy boots is four inches by three inches, okay? And so, lovely Linda, she only dances in her stiletto high heels because it makes her legs look good, you know what I mean? And those little stilettos have a little high heel that is a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch, okay? Now, you're gonna get stepped on, I guarantee you that, because we're not that good at dancers, okay? So let me tell you something that you'll run into in solids, and that is stress, okay? And stress is what we call the intensity of the force. Okay, so stress is P over A. In other words, the force divided by the area that it's distributed over. So in my case, you'd have 220 pounds divided by, three times four, 12 inches squared. Now that's gonna give me PSI, okay? Where lovely Linda, lovely Linda over here is uh, 120 pounds divided by a quarter times a quarter 
That is 0 0.0625 inches squared. And let's see what we get here. So if you're dancing with me, you get 220 divided by 12, you're going to feel 18.3 PSI, okay? But if you're dancing with Linda over there, 120 divided by 0 0.0625, you're going to feel, whoo, 1,920 PSI, okay? Now, I don't know what the sheer stress of skin is, but... You may be, you know, if I step on you, it's going to hurt. But if she steps on you, she may be standing on the floor, like through your foot, right? Whoa, punctured a hole right in you. So that's distributed load. If you take a big load and you distribute it over a bigger area, the intensity of the force is much less. Whereas a smaller load even over a very small area, the intensity of the load is very high. Okay, so when do we see this kind of stuff in real life? Let's say I've got me a truck drawn over here. Let's say you go to the hardware store, okay? You, you're building a new house, and they're going to deliver it to you. And so what they do is they go out and they stack up two-by-fours, okay? And two-by-fours look like this, okay? And let's say that two-by-fours were, I don't know, 500 pounds per foot. And then the little guy at the hardware store thought he'd be clever. There was going to be some cinder blocks on there, so he stacked them like up high but then he went every row he stacked them one less so he had like this triangular load here okay very clever little brick stacker guy and what we do on triangular loads is we only give you the tallest point so let's say that's 700 pounds per foot at this end it's zero pounds per feet isn't it and then i don't know for some reason on that job site they also were asking for a whole pallet full of helium okay maybe helium and so that load is like this, 200 pounds per feet, but it's going upwards, right? It's, it's pulling upwards, okay? So, and if we look at this, you might say, well, okay, uh, find the reactions on the tires, okay? So we could say over here, maybe we have a BY, and then over here, I have an AY, and I could solve for those reaction forces on those tires if I can convert those distributed loads into concentrated loads. Well, this first one, let me just, let me, let's make up some numbers here. This looks like uh, uh, 15 feet. Well, I'm going to do numbers that I can do in my head. How about that? 20 feet. Okay. And this is 20 feet, which would make this back here 13 feet. Okay. It's a 53 foot trailer. That's how long, that's how long most flatbed tractor trailers are. 53 feet. Okay, so this bit up here is 500 times 20. Um, that's going to be 10,000, isn't it? And where would I apply that? Right there. So that's 10,000 pounds. And I would apply that right in the, the uh, center of that rectangle because the centroid of a rectangle is half the base, right? Then this guy, and I, all I'm doing, think about this as an area. Think about the 500 as the height. And the 20 is the width, and I'm finding the area. You can't go out of the tape measure and measure that area, but it's an area, okay? This area here is 700 tall by 20, but it's a triangle, so I'm going to treat it like an area. I've got to divide that by 2. So that would be like 700 times 10, which would be 7,000. And where would you put that 7,000 pounds? Well, I put it like right there, okay? Why right there? Well, it's at one-third the base of the triangle, right? So this distance right here would be 20 over 3, okay? That's centroid stuff, isn't it? And then over here, ooh, the only tricky part about this is the arrows are going up instead of down. So this is 200 times 13, which would be 2,600, and I would put that right there, okay? 26. 100 pounds and it's in the middle of the 13 and so now 
Now I've got three concentrated loads where I used to have distributed loads. I can solve that like a regular old statics problem, right? Take the moment at A, and I got 400 times 2, rotating me negative. I got 500 times 6, rotating me negative, plus BY times 7, rotating me positive, and just solve it like every problem we've done. So distributed load problems should be really easy for you if you know what a centroid is, because all you got to do is calculate the area of this shape, 100 times 4, right? Apply that load at the centroid of that shape and then just work it like a regular old statics problem, okay? So we'll, when I come back, we'll work one of those problems in the next video and uh, maybe that'll make more sense to you. So hope that helps.